Yo, what up? It's Benjamin D'Souza here. Back with another vid. The Yautuan Emperor. Back at it again. But, uh... Yeah, I'm on my way home right now, man. Leaving out west, man. On my way back to the town. Out here in... Miller, Kansas. Smallsville, if you will. <laughs> I'm excited about this weekend, man. Family coming in town, man. We about to do it. B I double G. You feel me? You know, it's one of the one of the beautiful things about black culture is uh, all these family gatherings. Like I said in one of my prior videos, man, it's something poetic about like a family cookout. You know. You got, the, you got the older aunts sitting over there in their corner talking about this, that, and the third. You got the gentleman at the, at the, at the bones table. Domino, motherfucker. <laughs> you know, and then you got the kids running around the yard and whatnot. Some poetic about that. Then you smell the aromas in the air of the barbecue or, you know, if you like my family, you got, you got the, uh, the fish fry joint going on. So, you know, everybody, man, be safe out there. It's a Labor Day weekend, man. Town gonna be popping. I can't wait to get home. But anyway, I wanna do a quasi recap of uh, Obsidian's uh, latest podcast, Do Black Women Prefer to Be Baby Mamas? And uh, let me just say this, if you rock with me, you know, if you're, if you're a subscriber or a listener, my day ones, what's up, styles? Stylistic, I mean. But, uh, yeah, you owe it to yourself, as, as he would say. You owe it to yourself to go over there and check that brother's uh, channel out. But anyway, I want to say, you know, before, before I come out the blocks, I do believe that... Uh, black women prefer to be baby mamas now uh, I know towards the latter half of the of the broadcast of uh, Ellis LSL LSS she made she made some um, she made some some valid points you know her perspective that you know they they don't intend on being they really don't want to be baby mamas and I kind of got with you know where she was coming from and whatnot but I would venture to say that they do want to be baby mamas. And the reason why they, uh, they're schizophrenic, in a sense, as the, or bipolar, as a, how Ellis put it, is because instinctually, and this has been programmed within, within uh, all women's DNA for time immemorial since hunter gatherer days you know she's always submitted herself to the man's plan and you can say to the man or to the man's plan but um i got that from uh bgs he did a bang up job on this on his latest one of his latest videos of the black the black family 40 years of lies you know go look that article up i'm not finished reading it's a long article but I read like halfway through it. I might do my own little personal recap on that article myself. But I think, you know, uh, BGS did an excellent job. I don't want to go into, you know, certain critiques that I have about what he said in there right here. Because this ain't that video. But anyway, in that article, it said that the, that the woman submits herself to the man's plan or to his vision. You know? So, you know, it's just like in the hunter-gatherer days, the woman wasn't necessarily submitting herself to the man. The man said, hey, look, the herd is moving west. I know you got your, your, your little garden, you know, I, I know it's some good, you know, fig trees and fruit trees around that we can gather shit from, but, you know, winter's coming up, and we gonna need a couple of... Uh, a couple of water buffalo so we're gonna you know 
follow the herd, go west, get us about a half a dozen of them, you know, that'll keep us, hold us over through the winter, and then we'll be good. And the women, and the woman wasn't necessarily submitting to the man, she was submitting to the man's plan, you know? And like it says in the Bible, each man to his own house. Each man to his own house. You know? I like in I like in the, the relationship dynamic between black man and black woman to that in the Bible, you know what I mean? So the man's vision or his plan for the future is from God. He presents this vision to the woman. The woman submits herself to that vision and what her job is while she's this is this is how you be be a be a help me, ladies, if you so happen to come across this vid. This is how you're a help me in this situation. If you see your man diverging from that vision or that plan, it is your it is your duty to get him back on the path. It's like, oh, 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 whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa, hey nigga, hold on. You say we was doing X, Y, and Z. You starting to do elemental P. You need to get back on the vision. That, that's why I'm here. You know, you told me that you was going to do this, that, and the third. That you was going to do X, Y, and Z. So I'm I'm giving you my youth, beauty, and fertility in exchange for your protection and your provision. And, and the vision that you gave to me explicitly laid out that, you know, you were going to provide these protections and these provisions. You get, you get what I'm saying? So ladies, that's how you become a help me. But, you know, to bring it back to... You know the dynamic between black black men and black women and how we you know how I say that that dynamic is is similar to you know what you see in the Bible it says God then man then then women and children you know because if you want to just get secular and and um, you know, if you want to get secular with it, scientific with it, with it, women lack the uh, they lack vision. They 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 not in all cases, not in all cases, but as a whole, they lack the the capability to think two, three, four steps ahead. They lack vision. The man is blessed with the vision. Not all, not all, because you have some some very base level, you know, low level thinking men out here that you know they can't see past living check to check and just paying their bills. You know that are that, that's life to them. Are you know fucking bitches and and making sure that they keep a a fat sack so they can stay high. You know what I mean? So yeah, you do have men who have a small scope and who lack the linear thought. That's the word I was looking for. They lack linear thought. But as a whole, one of, from a cognitive standpoint, one of man's greatest gifts, or greatest strengths, is the ability to have linear thought. Be able to think years in advance. Be able to think, you know, four or five moves ahead. Know, and uh, where, in my opinion, where the, the schizophrenia or not the schizophrenia, the bipolar aspect of what we have in, in our women, well, in black women today, is that they have been programmed. They have they have reprogrammed themselves to be adversarial towards that hate. That, that help me position. 
but it is deeply coded within their DNA to want to submit to a man's vision. So what we have now, as far as the uh, baby mama industrial complex is concerned, and I'll be speaking about that in a minute, we have a group of women who instinctually want to submit to a man's plan, but from a, phil from a philosophical standpoint, they don't. So what it is now, they've tried to manufacture this artificial Goldilocks zone, if you will, where they're completely independent and, un and autonomous. Is that the word I'm looking for? Well, completely independent and sovereign, if you will, while at the same time reaping the benefits and the protection and the provision of a, of a man's vision. Excuse me. While not being beheld to the discipline and the standards of that man's vision. Because a man with vision, he needs to have a level of discipline about him. And he needs to have a level of morale, morality and standards, you know, as it pertains to dealing with a woman and, try, and trying to bring her along for her to be a part of his vision. One of his standards may be, hey, listen. Enough with the box chop. I don't want to come home every day and you, you know, talking a gang of shit, fussing about a whole bunch of nothing. You know, I got I got two clients that need this done for them. I, my our, our, my boss at work is talking this and or you know well whatever. Whatever his process is to achieve his vision, whatever he's doing, may that be school, work, uh, entrepreneurship, whatever. He doesn't want to come home and have to hear a whole bunch of that. That that might be one of his standards. Yeah, cut all that. Cut all that back chat. Cut all that back chat out. Or another one of his standards may be, um, you know, don't have your don't have your panties all out in the street. You know what I'm saying? If you rocking with me, I'm supposed to be protecting and providing for you. Keep your goddamn legs closed. Except for me, obviously. That may be one of his standards. And uh, what the truth as we know it, I believe that's the brother's name. Shout out to him. He made a very good point when he said, uh, you know, a lot of these... A lot of these women do want to become baby mamas because they are doing things intentionally to sabotage their relationship with said man to run them off. Because, because you don't have, as he put it, 77% kids born out of wedlock if you're not, you know, uh, divisive, if you're not uncivil, if you're not unruly. You know what I mean? So so they so, so they manufacture this shit. You know what I mean? So they get with a man who has vision. They purposely don't don't hold themselves to any standard of that man's vision. So the man, if he has any backbone, is gonna say, "All right, bitch, peace." But they still want that man to be daddy. You know, whenever she needs her, you know, now 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 he's the baby daddy. You know, whenever she needs her tire changed or, or her oil changed or, or her uh, driveway shoveled or whatever, you know, or if she's a little light on the rent that month, even though the man's paying child support, 
she can still call him up. She can still call him up like, hey, um, I need to take uh, little man man to daycare today, but uh, I'm kind of shoveled in and I hurt my back at work yesterday. So can you come over and shovel my driveway? So now she has, she has manufactured, you know, this, this Goldilocks zone where, where she's still receiving perks and benefits from a man or from the man as she would her husband. But at the same time, she didn't have to be beholden to any of that man's standards. You know, the man can say, I don't want any other man around my kid. And she'll say, boy, we not together. Now she can, now, now she can have her, her panties all in the street all she want to. While having her baby and while still receiving the perks and benefits from the baby's father. So it's like, it's like they manufactured their own little personal beehive, if you will. You see what I mean? And I've said this before, but I'll say it again. A lot of black women, I would say the vast majority of them, and you could just tell by just having a simple conversation with them. They are attempting to marginalize black men in the manner in which white folks, quote unquote, marginalized black people as a whole. You see what I mean? Just listen to their language. And I've said this before, listen to their language and how they talk about black men and how they talk to black men. Niggas ain't shit. Now just, now when you hear that, just imagine that it's a, a, a lily white clans member saying that same shit, saying that same phrase. Niggas ain't shit. You can walk through any project in America and hear a slew of bitches say niggas ain't shit. At the same time, you can walk through damn near any trailer park in America and hear the same shit. Niggas ain't shit. They took our germs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And also, pay attention to this. When they call you boy, Remember how them white folks used to do our people back in the day? Where you going, boy? What you doing, boy? <laughs> just, just next time you have a conversation with a with a black woman, and let's say y'all 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 might be having a uh, not not even a disagreement, but uh, like you know you you might jokingly say something in contention to the black chick to the black female. And she'll say, boy, 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 it's always boy. It's always boy. Now, you could be six feet, 215 pounds. You know, you got 60 pounds of more muscle than she got. You know, you could be damn near a foot taller than this bitch. She you towering over her, and she looking up to you calling you boy, boy the same shit man the same shit they they have they have taken on white uh white supremacy mindset as it pertains to marginalizing the black man now I believe it was somebody, Dread, Dread Mega, I forgot what his name, but Nagone shouted him out in the comment section, 
And uh, the brother said something to the effect. He said, if a black man's having fun, dial 911. What, what, have, what have we been seeing going on over the past few years? White folks calling the police on black folks for any to little to no reason whatsoever. In the hopes of trying to get said black man into a deadly situation involving the police. Contrast by contrast. What do you see? What have black women been doing for the past 30 years? The same shit. The same shit. Just how, just how some, some uh, other groups of peoples who want to marginalize us use the judicial system and use the enforcement arm of the police to uh, keep us in line and further marginalize us. Black women do the same shit. They do the same shit. They do the exact same thing. They'll, they'll use the judicial system via the family court to try to marginalize you and financially cripple you. They're looking for any excuse to call the police on you in the hopes of you getting into a deadly confrontation with the police. Same shit. You, you know what I think? Now this is just a theory. Now these other groups of people who are utilizing these tactics as uh as of recently you know over the past few years you know calling the police on on black folks are relatively nothing i think i theorize that they got that idea from black women themselves they said hmm now these black women are doing a bang up job of uh you know laying a smack down on these niggas what are they doing what are they doing this so what, what are they doing so well Let's use some of their tactics. Oh, the black women are calling the uh, police on, on, on black men as much as they possibly can for relatively no reason whatsoever. All right, yeah, let's do that. That's purely speculative, but you know, you can see the parallels there, right? Also, I wanna, I wanna speak on this uh, baby mama industrial complex and it's one of the reasons why I jumped I jumped on that boy what's his name George Aiken when uh, when, he, when he hopped on the panel I believe it was last week when he hopped on uh, old man's panel last week and he got to talking about this all this other shit and I started listening to him and I'm like man this sounds like some some uh, some C90 non-profit shit man what it sounds like and you know back home I've, I've run into numerous people who have these uh non-profit organizations they're lying in their pockets you know they're lying in their pockets under the guise of helping the community you know what i'm saying And that is where the baby mama industrial complex comes into play. Because this isn't just isolated incidents. Like all, all of this, uh, systemic fuckery that brothers all around the nation are, are, are going through at the hands of this, this succubus this this siren if you will it's a well oiled machine this shit isn't just isolated incidents it's it's a whole machine behind it that is manufactured and maintained by these women for the most part for the most part you have these You have these older thoughts 
you know, these sunset thoughts, you feel me, as I like to call them, you know, where the, where the sun is setting on their sexual marketplace value, but they still want to hold on and act like they still got it, you know, these sunset thoughts, <laughs> you know, in their latter 30s, early 40s, they'll take these younger, these sunrise thoughts under their wing and give them tips and techniques and strategies on how to get pregnant, how to disintegrate the relationship, and how to effectively run this man through the ringer when you inevitably bring him into child uh, to the family court. And um, brothers. If you're in this situation, if you're going through it right now, I would implore you to study your state laws on how paternity is established. I don't know how it's done in your state, but in the state of Missouri, they establish paternity in three ways. Reason number, uh, way number one, I believe, um, the man goes to court and says, this is my child. I want, you know, to sign the birth certificate and, you know, this be my child. Then uh, you're basically, you know, at that point, you're basically just putting your fucking head on the chopping block. But uh, reason number two, obviously a paternity test, right? Reason number three, here's the tricky part. In the state of Missouri, if you are present at the hospital at the time of birth. Cause you know, if you're in the room, the delivery room, what do you gotta do? You gotta sign in. Even if you don't sign the birth certificate, if you sign in and it shows that you're there, that's your ass. That's your ass. So my baby, so when I knew this, in light of my past circumstances, you know, it's a, it's a damn shame that I wasn't there for my firstborn's uh, birth. But given the, given the circumstances with her having multiple sex partners with multiple people while she was pregnant, as far as I was concerned, that baby could have been anybody's. It just so happened that my sperm got to the buff fucking egg first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I purposely, you know, the first first option to establish paternity, that was out of the question. I'm not going to court and surrendering like that. I ain't this shit. I would not go quietly into the night, you feel me? But uh, I said, damn, I'm, I can't be there. Because if I am, if the blood test comes back and it shows that it's not mine, I'm still gonna be on the hook. Because the judge gonna say, well, nigga, you was there. Shit, somebody gotta pay for this motherfucker. But it's a well-oiled machine, man. As, as far as as far as it comes to uh, bleeding resources from from the black man, I'll give you an example. These chicks, these 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 uh, these succubuses, if you will, they'll go out and they'll start up a, a, a daycare or whatever. They'll, they'll start up a daycare. Using the uh, nonprofit federal grants and shit, right? Baby mamas will come into the daycare. They'll say, hey, I'm about to put my baby daddy on child support. I need you to cook the books for me. The daycare will then give up, give 
the baby mama a marked up daycare estimate, weekly estimate. So normally they'll charge what? 125, 130. They'll tell, they'll, they'll give her a, a cooked up book version of like $300. So when the baby mama brings that document to court, she says, yeah, I need him to help me with the daycare. The daycare costs 300 fucking dollars. All right, Mr. D'Souza, you got to pay half of that. <laughs> but check this out. Thanks to, you know, my family, they helped me get a lawyer and we were able to, you know, negotiate shit down or whatever. But I had one of my female cousins call this same daycare and inquire of a weekly price. So this bitch comes to court with a, a document from this daycare of an exorbitant amount for weekly daycare being like $300. I had my cousin call the same daycare, ask him for an estimate for one child per week, $120. You, you see how these bitches work in concert? how they work in concert it's like like i said it's a complex a baby mama industrial complex that's why i say that and it's all designed to marginalize you black man Oh yeah, and another thing. Let me get on this heifer. Pissy. <laughs> and her bullshit talking points. You know what? I know I, I know the um, the the phrase succubus has been added to to our, to our lexicon and whatnot. But I would like to enter a new mythical creature into the lexicon as it pertains to to uh, these females. That being the siren. The siren. And every time I hear Pissy get on one of her bullshit soapboxes spewing a whole bunch of gobbledygook. I think of a siren because she's got very very good crisp diction you know she has a somewhat of a firm grasp on the language and then she backs and she bolsters that with a uh, soft sensual voice and if you know anything about the sirens the sirens will be disguised as a as as beautiful women sitting on a sitting on some rocks by the shore, right? Singing, you know, sailors and pirates. They they, they would hear these beautiful sirens singing. And they've been out at sea for months at a time, and they're like, "Oh shit, I gotta go over there and see what's up with them." And when they go over there, they get to hitting them them rocks. They wreck their ship and them. The sirens inevitably devour them. So that's what that's what Pissy reminds me of. She reminds me of a siren. Yeah, she sounds good. She sounds good. But uh her lips ain't dripping with honey. Her lips is dripping with venom. But anyway, let me see what else. What else? Oh yeah, yeah. See Boogie, 
shout out to him. He uh, he told a story of one of his friends bringing a Korean chick home to meet the fam, and the fam was observing how this woman was uh, treating that particular young man. And uh, C Boogie said that old boy's mother, you know, went goddamn ballistic on him. Because that right there, that's a mirror. Especially if that young man's father and mother split, or if she, if, if you know, if that if that young man's mother, you know, used those fuckery psyops games to run his father off. Her seeing another woman treat her son the way. He should be treated is a mirror right up to her face. Cause she didn't she didn't she didn't spend years talking about how this nigga ain't shit, how he ran off and left. You know, she she didn't told the lie so much that she didn't that, that she believes it now. But when she see it, but when that mirror is up in her face and she's confronted with the brutal reality. Hey, it wasn't that man's fault that he left. It's your fault. But this is what you wanted, right? You wanted to manufacture this artificial environment to where you're set up as the queen bee. And you got a whole bunch of worker drones. And I feel, and you know, I felt C Boogie when he said, uh, you know, all the aunties and the women of the family you know, they um, they utilize the, the the men of all various ages as nothing but utilities. You know, I couldn't tell you how many yards I cut of one of my aunties in the middle of a hot ass summer. Didn't even get paid for it. Just cut it because it's the right thing to do. Because her motherfucking ass had ran off three husbands <laughs> it's not my fault you had three chances at the motherfucking plate and you striked out all three times <laughs> you feel me <laughs> now I'm supposed to do shit that your husband one of your ex-husbands should be doing get the fuck out of here get the fuck out of here I come from a big family on both sides. My mom is one of 15, my daddy is one of seven. So uh, on that uh, matriarchal side, on my mother's side, yeah, that's, that shit is real. That shit is real. And you know, you gotta be careful, man. You really do because uh, you know we talk about these simps all the time but what do you do if you stand up for yourself as a man and then you're confronted by one of your simp relatives yes your, your simp male relative And this shit is dangerous out here, man. This shit is dangerous. And I play no fucking games with these simps. I let them know. Even members of my own family who want to come to me with that simp shit. Man, you will get hurt fucking with me. We can all fall out. For all I care. This shit can go to the extreme level of violence. So this is what you do. But yeah, and that's why, what's that one dude, that one skunt, hopped on a panel sometime last week talking all this rah-rah shit and then, gonna, and, then, and then gonna try to challenge Rude to a uh, boxing match. I got in that motherfucking chat like, nigga, I'll box you. What you wanna do? 
I'll be all around this country. I'll be in your city. I guarantee you I'll be in your city before the year out. Give me your motherfucking email address. And when I get to your city, I'm going to email you. I'll pay for the fucking ring time at the gym myself. We can do it whenever, however you want to. Three, four, three minute rounds, whatever. 10, 10 ounce, 12 ounce, 14 ounce gloves. Hell, if your ass even want to put on some shin guards and we can just kickbox it out, we can do it that way too, motherfucker. Shit, we can go no mouthpiece, no headgear, headgear, mouthpiece, whatever you want to do, man. Don't fucking play with these simps, man. Just as strongly and as passionate as you feel about your position, I feel you can you can times ten that on how I feel about my position. Shit, what uh what what day they say? And Friday after next when uh when, when Holy Moly was giving them the rundown about the job at the at the little strip mall and shit, what day they say, man, I'll die for this shit. <laughs> but yeah man yeah and it's a it's a vicious cycle it's a vicious cycle too cause uh the truth as we know it, you know, he broke down the uh, the Oedipus complex, which was brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I forgot what the name of it was. I studied it in, in psychology. I just I just knew it as as uh, Freud, because you know Freud kind of ran with that. But uh, yeah, that was fucking brilliant. And you know what you have. is essentially these young men are thinking and acting just like the women. Now, over time, they might develop a quote-unquote masculine exterior. You know, you know, if, if you live in the hood or, or if you've lived in the hood or if you lived around black folks, you know you kind of got to present yourself in a certain way. So these young boys who are really bitch-made be honest with you they learn how to adapt to their environment and put on a masculine masculine exterior it's kind of like that one uh martin episode it's called the, the great pain robbery when uh what's that what's that chick's name well anyway she she got her house robbed and i guess they held a like a town watch meeting at, at martin's apartment and the officer quote unquote who was walking the beat, was there, you know, talking to him about it. And Martin was like, no, nah, basically all you got to do is uh, hold your nuts, walk with a strut and spit. You, for all my, you know, all my folks familiar with, it's kind of like that. They're not really built like that. They really bitch made, but then they, you know, they've learned how to put on this, this, uh, this fake exterior. And I see this shit all the time, man. I see it all the time. I mean, I come in contact with these boys, these young boys. I'm talking about 18, 19 years old, and they gang gang all day. But when they're standing face to face with a real man like me, like they can sense that, you know, they can sense the force just coming off of me. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking to them stern, I'm making eye contact, they notice my posture. I done seen young boys just melt in front of me. I'm talking about divert their eyes, look down, soften their voice. I'm like, God damn, man. I'm trying to give you the blueprint on how to carry yourself, man. But that's what it is. 
That's what it is. You know? And that's what's dangerous about these simps. You know, you know, these uh these sirens, these succubuses, if you will, they're dangerous too. You know, they have a lot of, you know, I, I don't underestimate anybody as far as their capabilities are. Um, as it concerns of them being a potential physical threat to me. I don't underestimate anybody. But these simps are particularly dangerous. Because they have the potential to cause severe damage. I let these simps know from the jump. I don't give a fuck if you my next to kin. You on some sipping shit, motherfucker blood will hit the ground. If you trying to muscle me on some simp shit, oh yeah, oh yeah. Blood will hit the ground. What Thomas Jefferson say? Sometimes the tree of liberty must be watered with blood from time to time. I'm not advocating violence, but shit, goddammit. Sometimes, sometimes it go there. Sometimes you at least got to let them know. Like, it can go there while you sitting up here barking and sounding like a bitch. Yeah, that shit might work for them. You know, all that, all that wolfing and all that barking, that shit might work for the bitches. But that shit ain't going to work with you, homie. You feel me? Cause push come to shove shit. Like I said, some blood can hit the ground. And you know that, so I don't even know why these simps, why these simps get on this, this, uh, this, this, this fucking strong arm shit. I have no idea why, cause you know that this shit can go extremely left. You don't have that safety net, oh, I'm a female, so I was just talking shit. No, you ain't got that safety net, motherfucker. And that brings me to uh, the question that the old man raised as it pertains to arranged marriages. And he said, he said, well, you know, what is the, uh, how did he say it? What's the alternative if the man is displeased with the mate and with and whom and which whom he has been paired with? I'm gonna say it like this. As far as arranged marriages are concerned in the context in which Cerulean and Angry Man and, and possibly BGS presented it, I'm not with that shit at all. I'm not with I'm not with the idea of pairing two grown ass two grown ass niggas together. You know what I'm saying? Like like you 29 and, and she 31, you know, you ain't got no children. And she got, what, three children's by three different baby daddies. Uh, no. You know, you're not about to pair me with that. You feel me? At the very least, you can go grab one of her baby daddies and pair, to pair them up. But yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not with that. That right there. You know what I'm saying? But as I laid out in my last vid, as far as the Eastern concept of arranged marriages, you know, Eastern in particular, being uh, the subcontinent of India, how they do it, I would be inclined to do something like that. You know, like I said in the prior vid, speaking about this, the they're they're both parties are coming from intact families. You know, each patriarch of of said family has a vision for their progeny. So they come together, they talk, they say, okay, you got a daughter, I got a son, 
all right, let's 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 get them acclimated to each other. So then they, you know they set up these these little quasi dates and whatnot, so they they get familiar with themselves, and then you know each you know the uh, the family on the boy's side you know watches him as he gets older, make sure he doesn't stray the path or whatever. You know they kind of keep him on track. And the same thing for the females, like you know female the female on, on, from the female family side. You know, she might have older brothers or, or cousins or whatnot. You know, they, you know, they keep an eye on her, make sure she ain't getting donkey fucked and shit by some other nigga before she is set to marry her said uh, husband and whatnot. And so by the time they get together, you know, at the very least, the man's getting a virgin. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, shit, I'll take a, me personally, it's just me. I'll take a, a six, six and a half, maybe a seven, that's a virgin, over a dime that's been ran through. You feel me? It's, it's had a goddamn two country miles of cock ran through her. You feel me? You know, and... and and she's been, you know, the, 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 the seven that's a virgin, she's been socialized to be more, uh, how you say, submissive to the vision of the man. Because she's seen her mother submit to her father's vision. But, you know, like um, Thinking Man Templar said, you know, that, that type of, that, that's, that's kind of wishful thinking. Because I don't, I don't think that that's a strategy to fix a broken community. I think that's a strategy to maintain an intact community. That's how I view it. Like, would that shit work now? No. 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 I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to pair my daughter with with Quantavius, and I wouldn't want to pair my son with little Aquafina, you feel me? But yeah, that, that's a tough, that's a tough nut to crack. What is the alternative if the man don't want the, don't want the woman? It's, yeah, I would have to say it, it, it probably be incumbent upon his father to choose the right family to pair with, you know. What uh, what Tom like to say? Tom like to say you can you can kind of tell at what age um, you know when children start to grow up who's gonna be the hot ones and whatnot who's and who's not you feel me when they get grown you know <laughs> I think that would you know that might that might have been a mistake on pop side shit. <laughs> But yeah, this uh, this matriarchal psychosis, man. This is some motherfucker, man. As uh, C Boogie puts it, I liken them to the xenomorphs from Alien. They operate the same way. You know those 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 face suckers that come out that egg. What they do? They attach themselves to a man's face, get inside of him, and burst at his chest. Same thing. But yeah, most definitely, man. On a on a conscious level and on a subconscious level, these women do want to be baby mamas. Because they do not want to be beholden to any standards, to any standards and any discipline of a man and of a man's vision. And shit, look. It's it's their world, man. It is their world. They got all the chips are in their favor. Society is, is gonna have their back. I mean, 
just 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 look at it from this angle. Now you know we all red pill here. We're all men, right? But at some point in time, you know, all of us we weren't born red pill. You know, some of us we we've had our red pill moments. But just think about this. All the females that you've talked to over the years, just in casual conversation. And let's say their baby daddy comes up in excuse me, in the discussion. What do they start saying about their baby daddy? Oh, my baby daddy ain't shit. He ain't that. He ain't this. Kind of like, uh, what's that one, that one older chick from a couple pod, old man podcasts ago when she was talking about how her, how she had to leave her baby daddy because he became a drug addict. And automatically, just a knee-jerk reaction when you hear shit like that is to, I don't know, your, 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 your simp instinct kicks on. You know what I'm saying? So these women have the backing of society. They, they, they have a, di- a direct connection to the heartstrings of the society as a whole. They have a well-oiled machine of the baby mama industrial complex that they can navigate through. You know, whenever, whenever they have, uh, whenever they need some advice on how to be a better baby mama, not in a good context, but in a, in a context in which they are marginalizing their baby daddies you know whenever they need advice on how to be a better baby mama they have no shortages of sunset thoughts to lean on and to to receive counsel from And of course, they have no shortages of simps who will do their evil bidding all the way up unto and including enacting violence on us Red Pill brothers. They got the judicial system on their side. They got the enforcement arm of the police on their side. This is their shit, man. This is their shit. You know? I liken myself into a Yauchuan predator that crash landed on a hostile xenomorph planet. Until I can find what I need to find to fix my spacecraft, I gotta navigate this dangerous and potential lethal terrain. Of this landscape crawling with these highly dangerous xenomorphs. And I've been meaning to get, I've been meaning to do a vid on, on why, you know, I roll with that predator theme. I don't have to do that for another day. But uh, I think that's all I want to talk about, man. This video's going on an hour. Oh, yeah. The solution is to drop out, if you will. Take your ball and go, take your balls and go home. That is the solution. As much as you wanna play, if you play, you lose, man.
Straight up. The game is rigged. But yeah, though. This is Benjamin D'Souza here. The Yautuan Emperor. You can contact me at one people, one, des one nation, one destiny at gmail.com.